What is up everybody? This is your guy Kly and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be talking about the Rockat Cone XP, which just so happens to be their latest mouse as of the recording of this video. But before I do, I just want to go ahead and say that this mouse was provided free of charge by Rockat, and as such I will be flagging this as a sponsored video. No additional money changed hands, but it can be seen as payment in kind, so I just want to be safe. However, all opinions presented in this video are my own. With that little bit of admin out of the way, I do want to go ahead and say that this is currently the most expensive mouse that I've featured on this channel. Though, that's not exactly a hard honor to get due to the fact that my previous most expensive mouse, the Booga LED gaming mouse from 5 Below, is only $10. This one's $90. And before the sticker shock kicks in, just keep in mind that that's not unheard of for premium gaming mice. There are quite a few popular ones out there that have a triple digit price tag. Of course, this $90 mouse has quite a few more features than that $10 mouse. But before I talk about those, let's talk about what's inside the box. Inside the box, you receive the mouse itself with its cable tied with a silicone strap, the manual, as well as a full set of spare glides. Now, I did say that this mouse has a long list of features, and strap in, because we're about to dig into them. Full disclosure, I'm just rattling these off in the order they're listed on the Rockat website, but I will take a moment to expand upon each and every one of them. So. First on the list is hand comfort, and I'm not going to lie, this thing is perfectly sized for my hand. I will admit, my hand is a little bit larger than average, so take from that what you will. Though, as far as I can tell, it doesn't feel like this is going to be too big for people with smaller hands due to the fact that when I'm holding on to it, there's still a little bit of additional room. I've definitely used mice that fill the entire palm of my hand, and other people I know have said they're uncomfortable. Next up, let's talk buttons. According to Rockat, the Cone XP has 15 programmable buttons, as well as a shift feature, which gives you a total of 29 programmable buttons. And in the order you're going to be addressing them in the software, they are the left click, right click, scroll wheel press, scroll wheel tilt left, scroll wheel tilt right, scroll up, scroll down, plus, minus, the four button cluster on the side, called T1, T2, T3, T4, the thumb paddle on the side, and finally the button situated behind the scroll wheel. As for the shift key that I was talking about, by default that is mapped to the thumb paddle, and by pressing that down, you're going to turn your mouse blue, and give yourself access to all of the different mappings on the mouse. But here's where my one real complaint with the design of this mouse comes into play. And that's the fact that if you have alternate bindings over here on the thumb buttons, it's not really easy to hit them when you're in shift mode. I kind of have to claw it in order to hit them, and I can only really hit the top two. But fortunately, you are able to remap the shift function to any additional button on the mouse, and personally, I'd want to put it up here on what is by default the DPI increase button, because by pressing that, I have access to all of the side buttons, the paddle, the one behind it if I just rock my finger a little bit, and everything else. The only thing I don't really have the easiest time hitting is the left click, though I can kind of rock it. I do need to get my hand in a weird position though, but you'll see later on in the video why that's not that much of an issue. Next up, the lighting, and Rockat calls this 3D RGB, and they have 22 LEDs as well as multiple light diffusers in the mouse, which you can see here. That gives it a really nice look in my opinion. Now you're probably wondering why you're not seeing RGB LEDs on the screen right now, and that's because while recording this video I'm going to have a whole heck of a lot of jump cuts, and I'd rather use a solid color, in this case, my favorite green. But to make up for that, here's a little bit of B-roll with the RGB LEDs going. Of course, this isn't what I consider the best version of RGB that this mouse can do, you're going to have to wait until later on in the video for that. Also, some people might think that 
22 LEDs and a mouse is too many, but these diffusers really make the effect for me. It feels less like I'm having random colors strobe throughout the mouse, which admittedly can be done with fewer LEDs, and instead the diffusers make it feel like I've got neon lighting in the mouse, and I kind of love that, especially with my recent addiction to vaporwave and 80s themed things. Next up is the Crystal 4D scroll wheel. And no, when they say 4D, they're not talking about four dimensions. You're not going to get length, width, height, and time. So scrolling forward and back is not going to fast forward and rewind your little personal bubble of time. Sorry, they have not unlocked the secrets of time travel. At least not publicly. Instead, what the 4D refers to is four directions. As I just demonstrated, you get forward, you get backward, but you also get to tilt from left to right. I don't know how well you can see that in this shot, so let me zoom in. And yes, all of those can be rebound along with the other buttons that I mentioned. Next up is the sensor. This is the Rock Hat Owlei 19K DPI optical sensor. Yeah, you heard me right. I said 19K, 19,000, not 1,900, because most of the mice that I've reviewed thus far are 1,200, maybe 2,400 DPI. This thing is 19,000. And it gets a lot more interesting later on when I talk about that in the software, so hold on to your butts. As for the switches in the mouse, Rock Hat decided to go with tactile and fast Titan optical switches. And I gotta admit, I don't hate them. Though I'm not as well versed on mouse switches as I am on keyboard switches. However, when it comes to clicking, the Cone XP can do a few additional tricks thanks to the Rock Hat Swarm software that I'm going to be talking about later. And now for something that kind of threw me for a loop when I was going through the specs on the Rock Hat website, and that's the cable. They refer to this as Phantom Flex, and that's something I've never heard of before. What I am familiar with is TechFlex, which is what's on this cable. Let me go ahead and get you a close-up of that. And it's a reinforced mesh, which is meant to keep your cable protected, though there is the trade-off that it's a bit more stiff. It's fine for keyboards, not so much mice. And I can definitely tell you that this cable is anything but stiff. In fact, when put side by side with another mouse that happens to have a braided cable, the differences are obvious. With the traditional braided cable, you have a bit of extra protection, but also a bit of extra stiffness. Though, admittedly, nowhere near as bad as the TechFlex. When it comes to the Phantom Flex cable, you will have a little bit of movement, but notice you're not going to have anywhere near as much. And this mouse is going to move quite easily, even if the cable is kind of cinched up in an inconvenient position for other cable types. It's about as stiff as wet spaghetti. Back to the bottom of the mouse, and we have a set of four heat-treated PTFE glides. And for those of you who are wondering what the heck PTFE stands for, that is polytetrafluoroethylene. Though you might know it better by the brand name Teflon. This mouse glides quite easily on pretty much any mouse pad I've tried it on. Even this one, which I'm going to go ahead and admit is not the best for this, due to the fact that it is coated in fabric paint since I can't find a lime green mouse pad anywhere. Also, some of you are probably very disappointed in me due to the fact that I peeled the protective film off of the glides before making this video so that I can properly test this mouse, and you didn't get to see it. But you're only half right. I did peel them before making the main video, but I was kind enough to get you this. Now, while I don't really consider the two-year manufacturer warranty to be a feature of the mouse itself, 
more just a business practice of Rockat, the last actual feature listed on the website is the fact that this mouse is compatible with NVIDIA Reflex, which while I haven't done a ton of research on it, I do know that it is meant to combat latency while gaming by bypassing the CPU or GPU or something convoluted, meaning that it just catches up with the frame offset of your processing. And for those of you wondering how much the Rockat Cone XP weighs, let's bring it in and it is flat on 100 grams. If you want to go outside of metric for a much less round number, it's 3.53 ounces. Now, before I go into the software portion of this video, I do want to take a moment to talk about the texture of this mouse, because that might mean a whole heck of a lot to some people. And while this mouse does have a translucent shell, it is a matte and textured translucent shell. So when using it, there is a bit of grip when you need it. And I don't know if you can hear it. And no, I'm not trying to start a mouse ASMR channel. The reason I'm bringing this up is because there's a technique out there known as drag clicking, which I still have yet to master. And to be honest, I don't have any plans to since I don't play any games that would benefit from it. But if I recall correctly, it's a method for sliding your fingers down the buttons on a mouse that causes them to vibrate. And as such, it will register a lot of clicks in quick succession. So to those of you wondering, like I said, this mouse is a bit grippy, so it might work for drag clicking even without adding grip tape. Also, there's a setting in the software that might help you out as well. And now for the Rockat Swarm software. After you've installed both the software as well as the update to enable the Kona XP, you'll be greeted with four main tabs. First off, we have the settings tab, where you can change the vertical scroll speed, the horizontal tilt speed, the double click speed, the window pointer speed, as well as change up your DPI settings. Not only can you change the five available DPI settings via either the slider or inputting your own custom number, but you can also use the checkbox next to the speed in order to disable it. In case you don't find yourself needing to cycle through five different settings, you can bring it down to something more manageable. Next up, we have the button assignment tab, which is where you can change up what each button on your mouse does. Though it is mandatory that both the left and right click functions are enabled on your mouse, you don't have to have them set on those buttons. You just can't change what the left and right click are going to be set to until you rebind those functions somewhere else. As for the actual functions you can assign to things, you can assign a macro by selecting one of the numerous pre-made macros in the Rockat Swarm software, or create your own macro by clicking this button, or going down to the Macro Manager tab down below, and then either selecting a pre-made folder or clicking add folder and then add macro, naming both of those is optional, selecting how the macro will actually be triggered when you press your button, then assigning any desired delay, either by recording the delay between your key presses, having a fixed delay between your key presses, or just not having any delay at all, then click start recording, hit your keys, click stop recording, and then hit OK. This will make your new macro. Side note, if you want to add mouse clicks to your macro, you'll need to right click the event list of your macro after you stopped recording and insert those manually. Now back to the original drop down menu, you have the ability to assign a hotkey, which is just any one key press on the keyboard with optional modifier keys. Below that, you have assign timer, basic functions, advanced functions, which also includes profile changing since you can have up to five profiles ready to be swapped between at any time, as well as any additional number of profiles you'd like that you can put in one of the five slots. Next, you can assign different controls for your internet browser, multimedia controls, the ability to open various things, including folders, programs, the Swarm software, and even websites. Next are the Rockat functions, which is where you can reassign the Easy Shift function. Side note, any key that you have set to the Easy Shift function is disabled in the Shift mode, for obvious reasons. Underneath that, you have System and OS functions. And if you're evil, you can take your friend's Rockat mouse and set one of the buttons to reboot their computer. They won't know what hit them. 
And finally, you're able to disable buttons as well as restore factory settings. Next up is the Illumination tab. Now, while we start off with the Wave Profile selected by default, you have the ability to choose between AMO effects, though you will need to enable AMO in order to have any kind of functionality with that. Then you have the original wave pattern, the fully lit or static mode, in which you can select one of many different settings to have on your mouse. This one's my favorite. And these settings also carry over into the heartbeat, breathing, and blinking functions. Last but not least is the Photon FX setting, which, in my opinion, is the best setting for the Cone XP. And the preview in the software doesn't really do it justice. Here's what it actually looks like. Last but not least, we have the Advanced Settings tab. Here you can change the polling rate, which by default it's set to 1000 Hz. You also have the Distance Control Unit, which controls the distance of how high you can have the mouse off of your mouse pad before it stops responding. Then there's the LED Timeout setting, the Debounce Time, which is probably going to be a very important setting for those drag clickers watching this video, since you can change the sensitivity of the click sensors in the mouse. On the right hand side, we have angle snapping, sound feedback, as well as resetting all of the settings on the mouse. Once you hit apply, all of the settings will be saved to the mouse itself. You don't have to worry about having the Swarm software running in order to have your LED settings or key bindings available. And there you have the Rockat Cone XP gaming mouse. A little sub $100 gaming mouse that really packs in a ton of features, especially when you take into account all the things you can make it do in the Rockat Swarm software. And it definitely has the most features out of any mouse I've personally used, not just the ones I've reviewed thus far. I've used reprogrammable mice in the past, but the things you can do with the DPI and the click sensitivity and all of that stuff, it's kind of awesome. And if you want to pick up one of these mice for yourself, you can do so at the Rockat website, which I'll link down in the description below, as well as on Amazon, which I will also link down below. If you do choose to pick this up on the Rockat website as opposed to Amazon, you can use promo code G10 CLI in order to save 10% off of the Cone XP or any other product on their website. And further full disclosure, this is not an affiliate code. I don't get a percentage of this. It's just something nice that Rockat wanted to do for my viewers. And because I feel like I might have spent way too much time talking about this mouse, I think I'm going to go ahead and say, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.